OK, so everyone is afraid of something. See this tarantula up there? Now, if your fear is interfering with your quality of life, very likely you have anxiety disorder. So according to the Anxiety Disorder Association of Canada, for every four people sitting here today, at least one has had or will have some form of anxiety disorder in their lifetime. Now, currently, the gold standard treatment is something called cognitive behavior therapy. Now, the principles in cognitive behavior therapy, or CBT, are pretty straightforward. Let's say if I'm afraid of presenting here, which I do, then you have to do a series of exposures. You have to present in front of yourself, in front of a couple of friends, in a small room, and eventually move on to this big lecture hall. Now, the good news is, according to research, 50% of people responded really well to cognitive behavior therapy. But the bad news is, the other 50% are left to struggle. And that's one of the biggest puzzles to us psychologists. So that's where my research comes in. So in my dissertation, I conducted two studies. And in the first experiment, if you try to imagine if you are this person sitting there, we ask you to do a very simple task. And um, you do the task on the computer for half an hour. If you do well, you get a $10 gift card. If you don't, that's fine. And but what is scary is we put a spider legs to you. And it's sitting in a cage, and it looks like the spider, the spider can get out of the cage at any point. Now, what would you do? So we found, in general, there are four types of people. The first category, about 20% of people, they were avoiding all the time. They didn't want to look at the spider. That's fine. By the end of study, nothing bad happened. They were not anxious. The other type, uh, the second type, about 20% of people, they were approaching all the time. They wanted to watch out for the spider. By the end, again, nothing bad happened. They were not as anxious. The third type, about 40% of people, were indifferent. They didn't care about the spider. They looked wherever they wanted. And they were not anxious at all. Now, the most interesting one is the last group. This group of people, about 16% of people, they were ambivalent. They wanted to watch out for the spider. They also wanted to avoid looking at the spider at the same time. They couldn't make a decision right, for the whole time. And this group of people, their anxiety level didn't come down. Instead, they became more anxious toward the end. Now, we replicated that finding in a separate study using images of high-calorie food, such as ice cream and cakes, and using people who are on a diet. And you can see why people can get ambivalent. So we, rep we replicated the same finding. And across both studies, it seems that the result suggests it's the ambivalent group who cannot make a decision. They had the highest level of distress, and the anxiety level never came down. So perhaps the key to help those 50% of people is to better understand and also target this ambivalence <coughs> in cognitive behavior therapy. And thank you so much for your time.